everyone it's Desiree and I am back with another birch press design design team project now this one's a little bit different I'm gonna be focusing on the faded lines stamp and die set but we're gonna do a little bit of play on color so that's really what I'm gonna focus in on so let's look at the products that I'm going to use and I'm hoping my voice still stays in got a cold so I apologize the way I sound so this is called the line fade it's nothing but strips rectangles and squares of lines whether they're close they're far and everything else so it's like an optical illusion there's dies that match that line fade stamp set which can be used for other things and then I'm gonna use the big lingo type thanks because I absolutely love those dies so what we're gonna do <clears throat> now this is a long video <clears throat> sorry for my voice here but I'm gonna make two panels here and I'm gonna use my distress oxides now the colors that I'm using I'm starting out with worn lipstick all right and then sorry for the paper rustling here and then I'm going to um, come in with I believe it's uh, abandoned coral that's right because I wanted just a little bit of a darker tone here so these colors are a little bit different they're not the norm when it comes to an ink blend background that I'm doing the next color that's going to come in is wild honey which kind of lightens up that abandoned coral now I could have switched the worn lipstick and the abandoned coral but you'll you'll see where I'm going here my next color is going to I'm gonna go now to the other side so I pulled in milled lavender again these are not normal colors that we may see and then I'm gonna come in with tumbled glass now I am not worried about a perfect blend I'm not worried if it looks smooth I want to have the general idea of a smooth blend with what I want to do but I don't need it to be perfect because getting the tumbled glass and milled lavender to go is kind of um, it can be done um, anything can be done but it's you know you get this white space in there and I'm okay now for the green I chose bundled sage I just really like the color I could have gone with something brighter so it's kind of the warm end of the spectrum is a little bit brighter bolder where the cooler end of my spectrum the green the blue excuse me and the purple are kind of on the lighter side but that's okay it's what I'm going for now I'm gonna do the same thing to another piece of paper so I'm not gonna show that I won't bore you with that so we're just gonna get that started now these are the two panels that I have they look the same correct now what we need to do we have to make sure these are dry remember these are oxide inks so they are a pigment and a dye ink merged together which is awesome these are my favorite inks I, I love these inks they are just awesome but I've got to make sure that it's dry so I'm using my Ranger heat tool um, just to dry these off and then I'm gonna come in I have both of the powder tools I have the pounce and I have the EK success so I figured the pounce would put more powder down so I'm gonna do that to both you can see I'm literally pouncing it to get that powder to come out this is what happens when I test it obviously it's not dry yay so we got to clean that up back to the drawing board we're gonna go back and we're just really going to dry these so I did that for a while um, and I also at one point I walked away and said okay I'm gonna just let these dry they do take a long time so but you've got to make sure with what I'm about to do that the panels dry so now I'm going to come in with the EK success powder tool it's a different type of powder um, and I do like this powder more I know it does smell like um, baby powder which is probably what it is um, which makes you think right so you can see though it's starting to clog up I show you a fix on that so stay tuned for that so I chose two of the lines I know out of all of these I chose two. I grabbed my Versamark ink and now we're gonna have fun on these panels so when I'm stamping these 
I want to make sure that they're in different areas of this blend. So I've got the large one that's hitting the warm side. I've got the smaller one down on the cool side. I've got a couple more in the warm and the cool side of the with the smaller one, but I'm only picking up the green and the blue and I'm only picking up the reds and maybe a little bit of the yellow. And so I'm shifting them. OK, it's you, you'll see what I'm doing here. Just just stay with me. <laughs> It was, it, this is kind of cool. <laughs> Again, these stamps are like an optical illusion when it comes to all the lines. So my embossing powder that I'm using, I'm still, um, still playing around with this. I'm trying out the Brutus Monroe, um, Alabaster Fine White and Raven Fine Black. So now I'm going to cover this. Now you can see the EK Success Powder, a lot more success, literally. And now I'm getting the powder all over the place. That's all right. That's why I have the paper underneath. Wasn't worried about being neat here, but I wanted to make sure that each of these were covered and now I'm going to heat set it with my uh, Wagner heat gun. So you can see how this embossing powder just, it just pulls right off the page. Um, not literally, but you can just see it, it. First of all, this stuff melts beautifully. It's, it's absolutely wonderful, but you can see that look. You know, the, the sides look shiny because they're so close. Um, it's, a, it's a different effect. So now I'm going to do the same thing, the same type of stamping. Now here's where I say, I have a lot of people saying, mine keeps clogging, it keeps clogging. All right, so I'm going to show you how I unclog mine. A little bit of side note here. I do tend to beat this tool, meaning I slam it down onto a table to see if it gets unclogged. But that's what happens. So when you unscrew that top, especially if you're in a climate um, that's damp, and if you don't keep this, if, like if your room doesn't have a dry consistency. So with my heat, you know, it, it is oil heat. It, it tends to help, but I don't keep a lot of heat on in my room because I like it cool. Well, that can cause problems. I just open that up. I know I'm getting powder all over, but it's going to work for me. And I just take a pin and just pull it through and then I tap it so that it goes back down into the hole. It is a big hole that's up there, but if that powder gets damp, it's going to clog up. So that is literally the way that I clean that out. I use a pin and just go to town with it. So I hope that helps for others that have been having that problem. And it works for a very long time for me. So, okay, FYI. So now I'm coming in with the black doing the same thing, putting them in different areas, making sure I have different looks. I probably should have come down a little bit more in the red area on some of these. I have too many in the middle, but that's okay. But here's the black embossing powder. So you can see these two different looks, but you really don't see it yet because you're still seeing the massiveness of the panel itself. So you're still seeing, okay, she's got the blend going on. It's a rainbow blend. Okay. She's got some white on there and she's got black on the other ones. Now we're going to die cut. So these are the two dies that match and I'm going to run these through my die cutting machine. And I'm going to do that for all of these that are sitting on these panels. And this is what they look like. So when you take them out of that panel, you get two very different looks same panel, same way you did the panel, just though because you used a different embossing powder, you get two extremes. When you use the white embossing powder, it makes it softer. It almost changes the color of your blends that you did in the background, it makes them softer. When you use the black embossing powder, it gives it a, an edgy look. Um, a rough, deep, rustic look. I like edgy. Okay. So it's almost a nighttime feel again, the same background. So what I want to show you here is just by using the, the embossing powder alone can change the view of what you're seeing. So I'm working directly on my A2 size standard card bases, which are four and a quarter by five and a half, and they are top folding. And now I'm just having fun playing with these designs, playing with these strips, 
you know, looking at what can I create? Of course, there's going to be some dimension. There's going to be some foam tape that's coming in. But I really like how this is looking so far. So now I'm going to use my liquid adhesive and my double-sided foam tape and just give myself the dimension, give the different looks. Um, and just make sure, though, that the strips are flipped. So you can see the strip on the left there underneath my block. I've got the worn lipstick and the abandoned coral, the darker reds up on the top where the yellow's towards the bottom. The other large strip, I flipped it. So now I have those darker colors to the bottom and the lighter to the top. Now I'm going to pull in those, the cooler end of it and put those on there as well. But if I have something on top of each other, I want to flip it so that you can see these differences that are going on. Because this one, you know, it's close to the one that's on the right, this small strip that I'm about to put down. So I wanted to make sure that the, the darker colors were above it and the lighter colors were down because I'm going to put that cool small strip on the other one. So you kind of see this wave that's getting created as you're doing it. It's almost connecting the background that I did. But again, it's a pastel. It's softer in its look. Same panel, same inks, same blending marks. Um, so I thought that was, I thought that was interesting. So just using something as simple as a stamp set, the same inks that you have in case you're, you're limited with the colors that you have and just changing your embossing powder can give you two completely different looks. So now we're going to, I'll call this one the night one. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to place these. I'm going to have fun. I've got, I got a great blend going on here when it comes to these strips. So I wanted to make sure that it was crossing over, nothing was matching. And now I'm just going to set the smaller strips in. Now, if you guys have seen my videos before, you know I'm all about the odd numbers. So three is the most appealing because the rule of thirds to the eye, it draws your eye in. But so is an odd number. So I want to stick with five when it comes to my front. So for each one, I'm going to have a spare strip, which is not a problem. We make good use of that strip. So I'm going to finally put the last one in. So it's kind of making a, a step going on, but I think I've got a great um, difference going on there. So they each stand out on their own. And I'm just going to take these strips. I thought about putting it on the front, but even number, nope, can't do that. I'm going to put them just on the inside of my card just to give it a little bit of color. This one is a side folding. I pulled this one from my stash. So when they open it up, they get that continuation of the lines. So I did my die cutting on the big lingo thanks and I'm just using the background. I don't want to use the outline or just the letters and now I'm just playing with where I want them to position and I love the way that looks right there for the white. Not so much for the black. It does get lost on the black which I thought was really interesting. So what's an easy fix? I'm just going to adhere it right onto the inside over that little strip that I just put there. So it kind of accents it. Again, we don't always have to put our sentiments onto the outside of our cards. They can certainly sit on the inside, but for whatever occasion. It doesn't have to be for anything specific. But I did really like the white on the outside because you could still see that. Um, the black, it just, it really melted in not that it looked bad and you still could have done it, um, but for me, it just kind of got lost there. So two completely different looks. I hope you give this a try. Um, this stamp set is great and it's perfect for this technique. I see so many possibilities with this and I just kept on playing with it. But you can see you have a very soft pastel and a very deep night look. Same backgrounds. I do hope you enjoyed this video. All of the products that I used, as always, will be linked down below. I hope you'll check out the Birch Press um, design blog to see all the other wonderful designs that are being created over there as well. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below and I will get back to you. 
as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it. If you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe and tune in for my next video. It's going to be different. Here are a few other videos I thought you might like from the Birch Press Design projects that I have created before and, of course, my playlist. Take care, everyone, and always remember, be creative.